We're here in the lovely city of Hereford and we're asking the public if you could ask God one question, what would it be? I think if I got to see them, I'd ask, why don't you come and show yourself to everyone so we'd all believe? I suppose the question for most Christians and most non-Christians actually would be, why does God and our suffering? I guess if God is meant to be loving, then why does he send people to hell? Do all religions lead to God? What are you? How do I know the Bible's reliable? Um, well, I've heard people, Christians, say that Jesus rose from the dead, but where's the proof in that? In this episode of But Why, we're asking the question, if God really exists, why doesn't he prove himself? Well, it's great to be here. My name is Joel. My name is Mark. Thank you guys so much for joining us. This is a big question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If God exists, why, why isn't he proved himself? Like, why, if, if he's real, yeah. why doesn't he show himself to us? Yeah, it's a big question. It's actually a good question. It is a good yeah, question. Well. I remember a few years ago, um, you know, Joel, you know me well. Yeah. I, I speak in a lot of different you contexts. Do. You love to talk. I do, you to love be fair. To... It's a valid point, <laughs> as people will discover, yes, in fact. 100%. To be fair. And uh, this particular event was a barn dance. Oh, I love Come a barn on. dance. Fish and chip love supper. It. Yeah, band dance. Band dance. Yeah, and Come then on. I'm speaking out. I mean, not as the dance is happening. Yeah, okay. Yeah, afterwards. That would be a skill. That would be a skill that I've not got, to be <laughs> quite frank. And at the end, this guy came to see me. He was so angry, like really okay. angry. Bracing and yourself. Then. Yeah, yeah, no, I was like mm -hmm. proper bracing. He said, The problem with you Christians, you just believe without any proof. Unless I have proof, I will not believe. Okay. So I said to him, okay, what, what kind of proof mm. would it be that you would require yep. for you to believe? He said, I don't really know. Which I found a bit <laughs> weird, if I'm honest, because he's like, well, how would you know it would prove anything if yeah, you don't know what kind know of what proof? proof is. So we chatted about that for a little while, and he said, well, basically, Mark, unless God stands in front of me, mm -hmm. I will not believe. I said, well, if God stood in front of you, how would you know it was him? Mm. And he said, well, it introduced. So I said, <laughs> so let me get this right. All as it would take yep. for God to stand in front of you go, hi, yeah. I'm God. And he said, yeah, that's all it would take. And I said, I'm not convinced it would. Mm. So why do you say that? I said, well, look, 2,000 years ago, God turned up on this planet. Mm -hmm. He made himself very visible, literally said, hi, I'm God. Yep. Some believed and some didn't. Mm. Even his brother didn't mm. believe. So yeah. I'm not convinced somebody standing in front of you that's fair, would yeah. make you believe. I just said that to him. I said, the key yeah. thing is you've already decided there isn't a God. Mm. You need to come in with a much more open-minded approach. I like that, the invitation to think yeah. more openly. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. You know, it's interesting, actually, because we I looked into a guy, Frank Turek. Yeah, yeah, um, cool. Incredible guy, and he gave this beautiful example because, obviously, we talk about Jesus and we see him uh, written accounts about him in the Bible and, and elsewhere, but yeah. what about the proof of God's existence outside of the Bible, yeah, outside yeah, of valid. Jesus? And so for me, I love what he says about the universe. And he says the universe is made up of space, time and matter, right? Yeah. And so whatever came before the universe has to be spaceless, timeless and immaterial. Yeah. Okay, so you've got a spaceless, timeless, immaterial thing. Um, it, it also has to be um, powerful, yeah, whatever yeah. it was, yeah, yeah. powerful to create the universe and to yeah. create space, time and matter. Yeah. So immaterial, spaceless, timeless, yeah, yeah. powerful. It's a list. Isn't it, it is a list. <laughs> um, but also personal yeah, yeah. Um, and intelligent because impersonal forces yeah. don't make decisions and choices to right. create things, right? right? So gravity, yeah. for example, just does what it does. It doesn't decide I'm going to be gravity right. today yeah. or I'm not going to be. Yeah. It, it just does what it does. So it's got to be personal, it's got to be spaceless, it's got to be timeless, it's got to be powerful, it's got to have a level of intelligence wow. to make those choices. Yeah. And so he comes up with this little list and you go, when you think of those things, spaceless, timeless, immaterial, powerful, um, and intelligent, what, what do you start to think about? Yeah, you start yeah. to think about, well, God, a being, or at least a divine being. Yeah, and, yeah. and at this point, we're not saying, hey, it's the Christian God of the Bible. We yeah. can't say that. We're just yeah. saying, when you look at the universe and the facts around it, you think, there's got to be something yeah. that's that's created this and made no, this. Absolutely. Um, and then he talks about the fine tuning of the universe, and it's incredible. But he talks about specifically the expansion rate of the universe, mm. and he says if that was changed, I think it was within like a thousand million millionth of a second at all, we would not exist. It's mad, isn't it? And that's not the only like crazy, crazy fact out there. And I encourage encourage everyone to yeah. go and look into that. But it's just the fact that it seems like it's been designed in such a way yeah. for life to flourish 
and be yeah. sustained, yeah. then it can't be chance. Like it takes more faith to believe yeah. that it was just chance that these things have happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I believe that anyway. Yeah. Um, and then he gives the moral argument. And the moral argument is something C.S. Lewis talks about. Yeah, but it's just that Lewis. sense of we all have this innate sense in us of, of things that are right and things that yeah. are wrong. Yeah, yeah. And yes, some people might say, well, it's a cultural thing, but yeah. horrible thing to, to bring up. But the Holocaust, for example, yeah, yeah. That's just not a cultural thing. No. We haven't looked no. at that and think and thought as a, as a culture, as a society. Mm, no, I think that's wrong. There's yeah. just this thing in us goes that is not okay, and yeah. that was awful. We yeah. know it was wrong. Yeah, yeah. And he talks about this sense of where do we get this sense of right and wrong? Yeah. If it don't come from ourselves, it's got to come from something or someone else. No, definitely. And so you're kind of left with this spaceless, timeless, <laughs> immaterial, powerful, intelligent creator who designs the universe is moral at the same time. Yeah. Who are you left with? But it yeah. seems like the God of the Bible. Yeah, no, I totally agree. There's an interesting little sentence in the Bible where it talks that God has made himself known. And basically what it means is through the creation, yep. through morals, yep. through all kinds of different things. So I think we've just got to come to it a little bit more open mm. mind and say, could, could this be really? Yeah. And that's the question we want to ask you. Could it be possible that God exists and has made himself known to us and is inviting you right now to, now to find out? Um, if that's so, why not chat with some people around you, ask a, a Christian, ask a friend, and just start those conversations yeah. to explore this. And if you want to find out more, there's a Discover More section that's got resources, books, YouTube videos, links, articles, all that. So you can go and check that out as well. But thanks for joining us.